Welcome to a new in the mail, the most popular segment hosted here on the channel and I want to start this video with showing you my oscilloscope which seems to be on the correct side of history supporting the good guys. Let's start with this uh, Raspberry Pi 4 aluminium heatsink slash enclosure and I prefer these over a traditional plastic enclosure and over traditional metal enclosures because these can also act as a passive heatsink Going with just a plastic enclosure isn't gonna work for you unless you plan to keep the Raspberry Pi idle all the time and going with a metal enclosure would also require installing some heat sinks and or cooling fans. Depending on what you're running on the Pi you might get away with just uh, this passive cooling for a Raspberry Pi 4 and this one apparently is designed specifically for the Pi 4 so the uh, aluminum islands that are supposed to contact the chips have exactly the right uh, size, shape and height, so it's important to search for the advertised model of your Pi to get the correct heatsink to have that perfect fit and optimal cooling. They also include these um, silicon pads and the required hardware to assemble the case. This one is for my home assistant server, uh, like I said on a Raspberry Pi 4. I will likely install it on a DIN rail so it will probably use some zip ties in the uh, beginning and then depending if I ever feel motivated enough and have the time I will also design and 3d print some kind of DIN rail mount for this enclosure But same as always links for all of the products shown in this video will be placed in the description below So do check them out and I know Raspberry Pi boards are hard to find these days If you are in the EU last time I ordered mine from theelectron.com Check out their website to see if, if they still have any in stock there are also DIN rail Raspberry Pi aluminum enclosures but the one that I purchased and showed in a previous uh, mail bag uh, did not act like a passive heatsink it did not have these islands to make contact with the chips and the DIN rail mount was a joke so I'm going to use this one instead the sponsor of this video Altium is one of the most advanced PCB design softwares on the market it has some pretty advanced features which enable collaboration among multiple team members so there is no wonder they are a popular choice in the professional PCB design world if you are interested in trying out Altium check out the link placed in the description below to sign up for a free trial of Altium my next item is uh, called a Sim Reaper and you've seen this in a previous uh, mail bag but I had to get a spare one after seeing just how effective this is. This is basically used for sewing type activities, for ripping seams, stitches, that kind of stuff but we can use this on the electronics bench for something else. With such a seam ripper tool it has this small insulated blob of epoxy that you can run on the inside of a cable insulation thus protecting the wires inside and the sharp blade to cut through the insulation and this works uh, beautifully for cutting insulation uh, on the length of a wire and there are many scenarios where you would want to do that but mainly for uh, repairs and uh, splicing into existing wiring. A pretty cool little trick and very inexpensive my recommendation is to just buy two the first time because you never know when you're gonna lose or damage the uh, first one you get. Next time I got a set of these two-part epoxy mixer slash applicator things because you buy a tube of two-part epoxy and it typically comes with a one mixing applicator. You just use a little bit of the epoxy and then you don't have another applicator a couple of months later when you decide to use the remaining epoxy. And I typically buy cheap epoxy from Lidl and I, uh, I thought I'd try these applicators from AliExpress. I don't have a tube of that uh, Lidl epoxy right now in the lab to test them but uh, I do have one of the original applicators that come with that and uh, they seem fairly close in size uh, they are about the uh, the same width just a different length on these uh, tabs so hopefully these will work with the little ep epoxy next up because i got some uh, dry solder paste that i want to reactivate and use i was looking for ways of high speed mixing the paste to remove the hard lumps that have formed and I started by adding some flux but then I needed something to stir mix the paste and looked on AliExpress and found this guy which is uh, intended for chemistry lab type applications. It feels like it's coated with some kind of chemical resistant plastic maybe, maybe it's a PTFE I'm not sure but uh, it has these uh, fins on its end uh, but really this is not very good for my purpose. Seemed like a good idea when I first ordered it but uh, now after receiving it I realized that it's not gonna get the job done. Uh, 
and I ended up using one of these uh, metal mixing tools from a kitchen mixer attached to a bench stand drill which kind of did the trick uh, the paste is still not uh, at perfect uh, consistency but I think it's usable and I'm gonna test it soon to see what kind of uh, results I get because a new jar of lead free paste it's kind of expensive so I'm gonna try to salvage the old one if I can Next up I have a couple of uh, ESP32 CAM modules and uh, it's one of those stories where I ordered the first units back in uh, September 2021 and they didn't arrive. Didn't seem like the seller shipped anything at all. I waited for two months and placed another order which surprisingly didn't arrive either. And then I ordered yet again, third time I was lucky and I got my modules but I'm sure that any one of my viewers sooner or later had such a moment where you just lost interest in the project due to the long waiting time. That's one of the reasons why I like to keep a good stash of components, modules, various bits and pieces in my lab. When I have a job or a new idea I can start working on that immediately while the momentum is high and the motivation is at its peak. With these uh, ESP32 CAM modules I was planning to uh, read the two water meters I have in my apartment uh, remotely to monitor consumption. In the meantime, I've discovered my water meter have an official uh, read sensor that can be attached to read the pulses and I'm going to try to copy that with a read sensor uh, because I can make a very low power pulse counter, preferably over Zigbee, that would run for at least a year on a set of batteries as opposed to running the uh, ESP32 modules with their camera which is kind of power hungry and uh, I would have gotten maybe a couple of months of battery time with heavy optimization. Next up I got a couple of these uh, Wemos D1 modules or clones. These are ESP8266 based and if you've been following me for a while you've probably noticed that I like to design and build my own sensor nodes and stuff for home automation but sometimes you just need a quick prototyping platform or sometimes you want to hack an existing gadget and fitting in one of these Wemos modules is just the perfect balance uh, if it's only going to be a one-off build. You've got the USB to serial interface, you've got the uh, voltage regulator on board and all of the I.O. connected to a 0.1 inch header so that's why I like to keep a couple of these around just for quick hacking and prototyping. And everything listed on AliExpress tends to approach almost double the cost of what it was three years ago and I don't see how these prices could ever go back down so in the long run I would say having a personal stash of parts is going to be beneficial. Next up I decided to try one of these uh, flashing or sometimes called burning fixtures for ESP32 and you can get these for various modules. This one is designed for the uh, ESP32 and the same story goes about this module. This is the second time I'm ordering one so I think I first placed my order about four months ago, didn't receive the first one so this is the second one. I have an ESP32 module here so let me show you how this works. These are spring loaded. So once you align your, your module in here, you should be able to just press down on the model, on the module, and it's now locked and it's making electrical contact with all of those uh, spring contacts. And you got the usual uh, USB 2 uh, serial on here though. This is likely one of those slow WCH chips, so you'd have to do the flashing at some reduced baud rate. Still could be useful for flashing your ESP modules before actually uh, soldering them to the uh, final PCB. Uh, I have seen Arturo on Twitter advertise for uh, selling these uh, spring clips uh, on their own. I think he sells them in packs of uh, 100 under its own brand. Um, I think he also makes some of these programming fixtures and sells them uh, on his online shop which kind of seems tempting. Maybe I will design and make my own ESP32 burning fixture uh, with features to complement my own workflow. Until then you'll find the link for this item in the description below. Next up I have ordered a bunch of these uh, VL53L0X and uh, VL6180X and these are time of flight laser ranging sensor modules. These are an integrated type of sensor with a range of up to 2 meters, uh, I2C digital interface and they're not new on the market. They've been here for quite some time. I think I might even have shown this type of sensor in a mailbag years ago. But what I like about these newer modules is that they come with this optical uh, 
cover as you can see here over the uh, sensor uh, which helps by filtering unwanted light and prevents dust from setting on the uh, sensor itself this is a nice addition and my plan is to try and evaluate if I can use these to detect motion as well as the direction of motion in a hallway so I have this uh, five meter long hallway with uh, three entry points two at the ends one in the middle I want to detect when a person enters the hallway from either end and detect their uh, direction and use that to turn on some ambient lighting to light up the different sections of the hallway. Now since my hallway is not wider than 2 meters, maximum range of 2 meters seems good for this application uh, but I'll have to test uh, this to see how uh, it's going. I've also ordered a bunch of these, uh, let's call them more uh, basic IR uh, sensors and uh, you basically have an IR emitter and a phototransistor in this tiny package. Uh, these are likely a copy of the Vichy TCRT 5000. And I didn't check the datasheet before ordering these. It seems like the expected working range for these is in the 10 to 20 millimeter range, which would not be sufficient for my intended application of sensing people's uh, presence in that hallway, but might be useful for other types of applications where you need to detect proximity of an object, like placing your hand in front of, in front of the sensor. Now, the advantage of these is that they are very cheap, basic and reliable. However, you would have to do more work implementing the circuitry maybe add some noise immunity in the form of a modulated signal driving the emitter. So you have to put a lot more hours into designing a sensor based on these as opposed to using just the uh, digital sensor I showed earlier. Next up I have this rather cool looking uh, portable ratchet spanner and it accepts these uh, standard uh, screwdriver bits that uh, you probably already have around and it has a ratchet mechanism which you can flip its direction uh, using uh, this switch here Uh, I wouldn't expect this to, to be of super high quality, but it's actually quite decent and might prove useful for working in a very tight uh, space where you couldn't fit like a, a normal vertical screwdriver. This one at a 90 degree angle could probably get into some very tight spaces. It's just a simple uh, plastic uh, handle shown here in orange, but it's not too bad, uh, no rough edges or not anything like that. So. I think this would make for a nice addition into my compact home use toolkit. Next up I ordered a few of these uh, inexpensive uh, Keystone compatible modules for um, RJ45, CAT7 and satellite coaxial connection and I don't plan to use these for the actual installation uh, on the sockets in my apartment. I already have some good quality Keystone modules for the actual installation, but these will be used for testing various connections before uh, installing the high quality module into a socket. I've experienced uh, this need recently where I was having some connection issues. I was trying to figure out why my network was dropping, which turned out to be an issue with the USB Type-C hub I was using and the Ethernet card built into the hub. I was getting desperate, checking actual wiring, ground loop issues, and instead of messing with the high quality Keystone modules, it's nice to just have some of these spares to experiment with. If I damage one of these, it's going to be just a cheap replacement. Next up I got another one of these uh, e-paper room thermometer slash hygrometer uh, things. I'm a big fan of these products from Xiaomi. I use them in every room but recently I've started upgrading to their Bluetooth version which means I can now also have these report directly to Home Assistant and collect their data together with my other sensors. There's also some open source firmware for these which allows you to change some settings. That's pretty cool. Or you can just run them as is, no mods at all, and you would still be getting a very cool product with an accurate temperature reading. And not only that, it's just a nice e-paper display and a very long battery life. Same as usual, a link for these will be provided in the description uh, below. And here is the last item in uh, today's video. This is an uh, e-byte Zigbee module. Uh, eByte is a well-known Asian manufacturer of RF modules and this one in particular is based on the uh, TI-CC2652 uh, chipset from Texas Instruments. 
It's one of the newer Zigbee chips with good performance and if you want to play with uh, Zigbee or jumpstart jump start your project, you can certainly go for something like this. Personally, I would like to design some Zigbee sensors uh, later this year and I'm exploring all options, uh, hence why I also got this uh, development kit for the NRF52840 from Nordic Semiconductors. Uh, they've been super nice and provided me with this dev kit for free, which definitely makes it easier to just put some code together and see how you can make use of their ecosystem to build a new sensor. So you'll likely see some more updates on the uh, Zigbee topic on this channel coming soon. This was all for today. I hope it was interesting. Let me know in the comments below if you ordered any of these items. Same as always, links for all of the products shown in this video will be placed in the description below the video, so do check them out. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month or you can simply hit that like button which is free and helps a lot. I'll be seeing you next week.